we're going to look at another example of functions and what we can do with functions. In this case, we're going to look at the intercepts for a function. Um, so I'm going to have two definitions. I'm going to give two definitions and maybe some examples. So uh, the first definition is the idea of the x-intercept. The x-intercept of a function f are the values of x where f of x equals 0. And the second definition is the definition of the y-intercept, which is the value f of 0. Okay. Again, we've got crazy definitions. We want to know what this means. The idea is this. Let's look at the graph of a function and see if we can make sense out of this in terms of the graph. Okay. Suppose we have some function f that looks like this. The y-intercept is where the graph passes through the y-axis. Okay. And to get the y value of that, we just plug in x equals 0 into our original function, and that's what we get. Okay, so there's only one of those if it's a function. Okay, if it's not a function, um, then it can have multiple y-intercepts. Okay. Now, the x-intercepts are where it passes through the x-axis. So in this case, we have multiple values. So we have this value of x, this value of x, this value of x, this value of x, and that value of x. Uh, and it's possible we don't have any. So you can have 0, 1, or a lot of different intercepts. Um, and one question is, is, why do we do this? And the answer is this turns out to be a useful term, a uh, useful way to do things in different situations. And oftentimes we can take other problems that are more difficult and flip things around and turn them into problems that involve finding the intercepts. And it just gives us a nice general tool for solving problems. Let's look at some examples. I want to find the intercepts of that thing. Uh, the first intercept is, is the y-intercept. I'm going to do that just because it's easier to work with. And I just plug in x equals 0 and just toil away. So now this is going to be 0 minus 3. Minus 3 squared is 9. And I'm just going to get a minus 7 out of that. Now, the x-intercepts can be a little more tricky. So I've got to work this thing backwards. I have to set it equal to 0. And now I'm going to play algebra games to try to figure out what the value of x is. So let's see. What is I'm after? I'm after this thing. So I'm going to try to get this all by itself on one side. So I'm going to add 16. I add 16 to both sides, get that. Uh, now I've got this thing on the inside, I want to try to get at it, but this is on the outside ruining things. So because that's squared, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, if I do that, I'm going to get 4 equals x minus 3. All right. And if I solve now for x, I'm going to get x equals 7. Okay. Now there's a problem here in that when I went from here to here, I missed something. And I'm not really looking for the square root. Remember we defined earlier the square root is the positive part. I'm looking for a number that when I take multiply it by itself, I get that. And there's two different possible values here. And the other possible value would be minus 4, right? Because minus 4 times minus 4 will give me this. Let me straighten that out. It's a little nicer. So 
So this is a possibility, and this is also a possibility. And now if I add 3 to both sides, I get x equals minus 1. Okay, so now for my intercepts, I have, excuse me, for my x-intercepts, I've got two possibilities, x equals minus 1 or x equals 7. Okay. Now, last example. This is just an example of why we do this kind of stuff. Suppose I have this kind of relationship. Okay, now I can go through and just do the algebraic uh, manipulations to get this. But I just want to do this a slightly different way and explain why we might want to talk about intercepts. Notice I can take this whole right-hand side and subtract it. If I do that, I get this. And what's going on now? So if I call this, say, some function h, this is now in the form of h of x equals 0. And I'm trying to find the x-intercepts this new function. So I started here, I've redefined this. And the reason we do this is that in practice, oftentimes we don't necessarily know what these functions are in advance. But if I can recast this in terms of an intercept problem, and then I can throw this on a computer and let the computer work it out, this is what we work with. And, and basically, we just have to tell the uh, computer how do you solve an x-intercept problem. And then we're basically done. So let me go ahead and finish this off. I'm going to distribute the minus sign to get that. Now let me simplify things here a bit. 3x minus 5x is minus 2x minus 5 minus 7 is minus 12. Let me add 12 to both sides. Divide by minus 2. Oops. I get minus 6. Okay, let me just double check this real quick. So if this is correct, then it should work here. So let's see, so 3 times minus 6 minus 5 is going to be minus 18 minus 5 is going to be what? Minus 23. If I plug in x equals minus 6 here. plus 7 is minus 23, and life is good.